my girlfriend tells me that I go crazy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes, I, I don't watch a movie in English and Portuguese anymore. I, I remember like two years ago, I stayed two years without watching an English movie. So because I wanted to, to, to learn Spanish and French so badly. You know? yeah. I think I'm very strict. Some people see it as a negative, but uh, for me it's positive you know, because I want to, I want to learn. You know? <laughs> We are, we're good. We're, we're recording. So Edmilson, hey. nice to meet you, uh, nice man from you South too, Africa. Man. Would you mind uh, just mm -hmm. presenting yourself, introducing yourself to the people watching? All right. All right. Uh, my name is Edmilson. I am from South Africa, uh, but my parents are from Angola. That's why I speak English and Portuguese. All right. I spent some time in Angola as well. Uh, I am a, an industrial engineer by profession and uh, an English and Portuguese teacher in my talking. All right. Perfect. Okay. Be, because when I saw your name, I was thinking Brazilian, right? Like, I yes, Santos. Yes. Like, I was totally yeah. thinking like a <laughs> soccer player. So, uh, the fact that mm -hmm. your parents are from Angola and Angola yes. uh, has a Portuguese uh, colonial history, that makes total yes. sense. Okay, great. Um, so that makes you a little bit unique as a South African teacher, I suppose, because you teach yes. English, but you also teach Portuguese. So how has that been? Yes. Well, I think it gives a, a big boost in my profile because I, I have a lot of students, not only from English side, but also for the Portuguese side. You know? yeah. It's a really big advantage. The fact that I speak Portuguese, I can have uh, lessons with students who are absolute beginners. So it's a really good advantage, a really good advantage. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So obviously there are so many Portuguese speakers in the world, right? And there are so many English speakers in the world. So you need to kind of do two, like you need to learn the different varieties, I suppose, of Portuguese and the different ones of English. Mm -hmm. So this yes. week, in these interviews, I've spoken to other English uh, teachers, but you are, I think, the first Portuguese language teacher. So um, do you ever run into um, a situation where you need to explain the differences between Portugal Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese, Angola Portuguese, or does that not really happen? Yes, I have many times, you know, <laughs> it happens in the daily basis, yes, that's true, but I think uh, I have friends from all over, you know, from Portugal, my brother lives in Portugal, actually, and I speak uh, frequently with people from Brazil, I kind of know a little bit the difference, you know, it's the difference not too much, you know, like it's really similar, like Spanish in, in, in Spain, Spanish in Europe, and in Latin America, you know, yeah, I kind of explain a little bit the difference, you know, but it happens a lot. It happens a lot. Right? <laughs> I just had that lesson yesterday, and it happened exactly. <laughs> <where you go. laughs> yeah, it was that's, amazing. You know? <laughs> that's, yes. that's wild. That's wild. Um, okay, great. We're going to come back to this after because I find this really fascinating. But in terms of your mm -hmm. teaching uh, experience, could you tell us about your teaching experience? Well, I started uh, and I talked three months ago and I didn't have any teaching experience at all, you know. I actually joined on 27th of December, uh, but I only started teaching on the 2nd of January because I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so yeah. I just went to YouTube, you know, to try to find some videos and I found your your channel i watch some videos you know I, I got some good advices from you and i started teaching you know i guess like i'm learning as i'm going you know and um yeah but i didn't have any experience at all i didn't have experience at all you know yeah, but i'm enjoying the journey i'm enjoying the journey you know? <laughs> that's good yeah. that's that's sweet yeah and it's good that you're learning as you teach because that's like literally yes. my motto like we learn as we teach right and um Absolutely. you know i find mm -hmm. I learned so much from my students, right? And from the experience. So maybe could you tell yeah. us about your students? Where, where do they come from? Well, from different parts of the world, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's what I like the most about the platform. You know? I have students from Europe, from Asia, I have from China, 
I have from Russia, from Ukraine, I have from Colombia, Brazil. Most of them are from Brazil because I, of the fact that I speak Portuguese, you know. <laughs> I don't know, I guess Brazilians like me, I don't know why. <laughs> huh? uh, Could be. But I have from uh, all over the world. Unfortunately, <laughs> not from Africa. I think I only had one student from Africa, from Egypt, but yes, beside that, all over the world. <laughs> wow. Gotcha. Um, so, so some of the Brazilian students might like you because you uh, speak Portuguese. They probably like you for your yes. personality as well. They probably yes, like you because yes, you're yes. a person, right? But, uh, <laughs> but, but oh, yeah, yeah, they. so th this is interesting because like some people have, this is a very controversial issue in language mm -hmm. teaching and learning. Like, do mm -hmm. I want to be in an environment where it's only the target language spoken? Or do I want to be in an environment where people help me in my like first language, right? So you're yeah. kind of saying sometimes your Brazilian students, you mm -hmm. uh, could switch back to Portuguese and then you could teach them in English and you could switch from uh, one language to the other. Um, do you have any students who don't like doing this? For example, for me, I, mm -hmm. I learn on italki and I like to just speak the target language i don't want to speak english yes. at all but that's just personal mm -hmm. so do you see yes, that yes. with other with your students at all yes some of them they don't like to speak on the native language at all you know and i think it's good i agree i agree with them you know i think it's good when you're learning a language to focus only that language i don't like to speak portuguese in my english lessons you know in my english classes at all you know, I try to encourage and motivate my students to do so as well, you know. Yeah, but some students, they don't, even though they speak Portuguese and they know that I speak Portuguese, but they don't like to speak Portuguese at all, you know. <laughs> they say, oh. teach me in English, you know, not even to explain just a, a sentence. But they are students, they are more relaxed, you know. But I try, I really try my best to do not speak uh, your native language, you know. I really try. <laughs> Fair it's enough. Very important. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it must be kind of difficult for some teachers as well, because some teachers like live in societies where code switching, like switching between languages is completely mm -hmm. normal, right? Like I've yes. spoken, I've spoken to a girl from India this week. And I mean, yeah. if, if you go to India, it's such a multilingual society in certain places and mm -hmm. switching between language and S South Africa. I mean, I'm sure South Africa yes. is the same. Like yes. it's mm -hmm. kind of normal to switch between different languages in certain parts of the mm -hmm. country, I would assume. Yes. So it could be difficult for teachers to restrain themselves and to not go to English yes. or not go to Portuguese. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> wow. Um, okay, cool. So how does this happen? If your students mm -hmm. do not want to revert back to Portuguese at any point, do they tell you that mm -hmm. when they book the lesson with you or do you ask them? How does it happen? Usually when we start the lesson, usually when we have this, the first lesson, I ask them, how do you like to have your lessons, you know? Some students, they are like really beginners in English. With these students, I have to speak a little bit Portuguese. But the intermediate advanced students, they, they tell me like, I prefer if you explain me in English, you know, you try to give me explanations in, in English, only at extremely cases, you know, like we, it doesn't really understand. But these cases are very rare, you know, so most of the time we speak in, in English most of the time. I, I also love to learn languages, you know, Beside of English and Portuguese, I, I also speak Spanish and French and I'm learning Italian. And I know how important it is to focus in the language that you're learning, so, yeah. <laughs> Excellent, man. Uh, do, do you learn on italki? Yes, yes, I learned Spanish. I, I took some lessons on italki and I learned myself as well. Now I'm, I'm starting learning Italian on italki as well. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, if there are any like teachers that you would like to promote, please just send them to me in the email and I could put them in the description below just to kind of give them a little um, a little bit of publicity. That that would be great. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Great. That's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. Are there any uh, teachers just off the top of your head who you've really enjoyed uh, learning with that you could uh, that like um, 
a name of a teacher mm -hmm. who you suggest yes, other people yes, learn with? Yes, yes, yes. I've just started learning with an amazing Italian teacher, you know. His name is Morgan, you know, he's a Sudanese, but he speaks Italian extremely well, you know. He's a polyglot, actually he speaks English and Spanish, I think, you know, he speaks Arabic, like he's an amazing teacher, you know, he can teach you absolute beginners to advanced speakers, you know. That's amazing. Yeah. Morgan, and he's from Sudan, yeah. and he teaches, wow, that's, that's just great, yeah, that's yeah. stunning. Um, yeah. Okay, so you are, I guess, a polyglot or an aspiring polyglot, it sounds like. You you are learning it's three languages. Uh, yes, <laughs> right. some people don't like that title. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I wonder, uh, I wonder um, um, what is your language learning um, plan like? Like every day, walk us through mm -hmm. a day, Fred Mielsen, a Portuguese English teacher on italki, but you also yeah. learn these three languages. So how, what is your project? Mm -hmm. What is your plan like? Well, I'm, I'm really strict when I'm learning a language. I like to learn uh, one language at a time. I try to spend like six to 12 months only focusing on a language. So I try to immerse the language in my life. Like everything that I do, I try to do in the language that I'm learning. For example, early in the morning, I like to do some exercise. And while I'm exercising, I listen to some podcasts, you know, I listen to, to some YouTube videos, but maybe in Spanish or uh, in French, nothing in English, nothing in Portuguese, you know. When I go shopping, I do my shopping list in Spanish, I do my shopping list in French, you know. I change my language on my phone to the target language, you know. I change my computer language, everything. I go like my girlfriend tells me that I go crazy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes, I, I don't watch a movie in English and Portuguese anymore. I, I remember like two years ago, I stayed two years without watching an English movie. So because I wanted to 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 learn Spanish and French so badly, you know. Yeah. I think I'm very strict. Some people see it as a negative, but uh, for me it's positive, you know, because I want to. I want to learn. <laughs> no, that's that, that's my kind of style. I mean, like mm -hmm. right now life is yes. busy with other things so i'm not learning as much but during the pandemic yes. i was learning like mm -hmm. a madman and my yes. my girlfriend as well it was like hard to watch <laughs> netflix because i just <laughs> always wanted to watch other like languages you know absolutely um, yeah it's hard but like um, i'm a little bit less mm -hmm. strict than you because i mean for me mm -hmm. i'm totally fine learning different languages at the same time because for me it's yes. it's all about the mm -hmm. like it's more for fun than it is yes, for actually proficiency building but uh yes, yes. yeah you know so i've taken lessons in uh, mm -hmm. six languages on italki and um yeah. and i've really enjoyed it i mean for me it's kind of like a hobby but you know you spoke about morgan and how he teaches arabic uh, to speak some Arabic or to speak some Russian, for example, yeah. um, on italki mm -hmm. would really be amazing. So, yes, um, yeah. yeah. So, so if any of those teachers are watching, uh, put your profile <laughs> in the comment section and <laughs> and let us know. All right, great. Um, so I guess we could say that you are a new teacher. Um, yes, yes. Do, do you have any goals for this year of 2022 in how you're going to improve as a teacher or even improve as a learner? Yes, yes, I do. I do have goals. Like my expectation before was surprised, you know, like I was surprised because I didn't think I would have the, the, the students that I'm having now, you know, I, I think Yes, it, it was really wonderful to me, you know, like it was really wonderful to me. But my goal is to develop my own materials. You know, I'd like to develop my own materials because I feel like I, I created a, a connection with some students and they want to learn with me, you know, they want to have more lessons with me, you know. I want to create my own materials so that I can last longer with these with this, uh, students, you know. Yeah. 
Very good. Excellent. Um, yeah. So material development, I think a lot of people who teach online, they could have this easy inclination to like want to, uh, you know, move into material development as well. Some of them don't though, right? Like I've made videos about material development and some people are like, no, I don't want <laughs> to do that. And, I totally get that as well. Um, but you're you're the first person I've spoken to who, um, or one of the first people I've spoken to who really show an interest in material development. So where do you think this comes from? Like, are you a very kind of creative person? Or do you think it's because you're a language learner? Do you think that has helped you to create materials or to want mm -hmm. to create materials? I am a little bit creative, yes, but it's also because I'm a language learner. But yeah. uh, during the time that I've been teaching in Itoki, I realized that every student is different, you know, like every student mm. learns differently, you know, uh, our personality, the way we speak, and it, everything in, uh, influences the way you learn the language. So that's why I think if I create my own materials, I'll be able to target a specific goal of the student. Yeah, that, that's the reason. Okay. Uh, good. Yeah, there's no one size fits all, right? Like it, it is about tailoring and personalizing mm -hmm. the lessons. And I think that's a really intimidating for some teachers because they think mm -hmm. I have to make a new thing for each student. That's so difficult. But yes. if you open your mind to, if you discover the different materials that are out there, mm -hmm. then you will be able to kind of eat like automatically kind of apply these different materials to different students it does get easier i find yeah mm -hmm, well true. you're so early in the in your experience on italki like oh my gosh and you've already figured out a lot of stuff that yeah. i hadn't figured out um <laughs> three months in this is really really good um yeah. okay good Let, let's have a look so you're, you're from south africa that's really important because i i think south africa has a very important place in the English speaking world. When I first started on italki, I don't think South Africans were considered native speakers. Mm -hmm. I, yes. I, I don't think like when you go on native speaker countries, I think it was like Canada, America, but I don't think South Africa was on there when I started, but now it is mm -hmm. on there. So I wonder what you, what your experience is with this Edmilson. Um, do you get treated as a native speaker most of the time or are you ever treated as a non-native speaker, do you think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, most of the time. Uh, sorry, Ryan, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, I could hear you. Could you hear me okay? All right. Yes, yes, I can. Nice. So most of the time, yes, I do. Uh, uh, and treated as a native speaker, but of course, some cases is not the case. Right? I think there were one or two lessons that I had a, a, a student. I, I don't remember from where. You know, he kind of really told me like, we don't. I don't think you are native speaker, you know, because people from South Africa they are not native speaker. Uh, the dialects and special languages influences on the English. It was his opinion. You know? <laughs> yeah. I don't agree with his opinion, but I respected his opinion. He did with me once or twice, but from the three hundred, the two hundred lessons that I had, it was only two, two, two students. You know, so it's very rare. Yeah, <laughs> yeah very, very rare. Okay, gotcha, yes. gotcha. Mm -hmm. It was a, it was a little bit choppy right there, but uh, yes, just to yes. recap. You, you, mm -hmm. you basically just said that um, there are uh, mm -hmm. situations where people don't think that South Africans are n native speakers, um, but it's only happened two or three yes, times, absolutely. right? Okay, all right, gotcha. Yes, that's true. That's true. Fair enough. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Are there any things that, hmm, let me just pause this. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. It was just a little bit mm -hmm. choppy right there, but that's okay. Yes. We'll, we'll move mm -hmm. with it. So what kind of uh, lessons do you lead? Do you do uh, just conversational lessons then? No, I do conversational lessons, but I also do grammar, reading, and I try to practice a little bit also the pronunciation. I do different kinds of lessons, but it really depends on the student's goal, you know, what the students want. You know. 
Fantastic. Excellent. Good stuff. Um, is there anything you'd like to say to other uh, South African teachers who are getting started on the platform? Are there any things that they should know? Any tips you'd like to give them? Mm -hmm. I think one thing that has been helping me a lot is the fact that now I try to understand the student, you know, and create a connection with the student. So I think it's important for all the teachers that are listening to us Try to understand your students, you know, try to see what the student needs, what the student likes, you know, what if you give conversational lessons, what kind of topics does the student like to talk about, you know, and create a connection. I feel like now I've created a connection with my students. Sometimes I don't feel like they are my students, but it looks like they are friends. We have known each other for, for such a long time, you know. <laughs> I think it has been helping me a lot. All right. <laughs> exactly. That's so true. I mean, man, like, your two 300 lessons and th that's a lot like that is past yeah. the first like real hump um yeah. i find if you get past the first 100 lessons you learn probably 60 or 70 percent of what you need to learn on italki right you've been exposed to a lot of it right um <laughs> and uh yeah but like just wait like after you speak to your students for 10 20 30 more lessons they do they feel like family they feel like cousins or something like that you know so it's amazing do any of your students have plans to immigrate to south africa yes a lot of them you know <laughs> some of them they asking me to visit them but <laughs> most of them want to immigrate to south africa because we talk about culture south african culture you know we talk about uh, touristic places and like some of them are amazed you know Many people didn't know that South Africa is a beautiful, beautiful country. So they do want to move to South Africa. They do. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are there any things, um, could, could you think of any things that may be surprising uh, about South, South Africa or any misconceptions about South Africa that you need to clarify yes. for your students? Yes, some there, there is a lot of, there are a lot of stereotypes about South Africa, you know. <laughs> And one of them is the one that we've just talked about, uh, about being a native English speaker, you know. But one common one, like some people still think that South Africa is a safari, you know, is a place that you find <laughs> a lot of animals, you know. <laughs> yeah. I just said a case, one student, we were having a lesson. I think it was our second or third lesson. And the student was like, oh, Ed Nielsen, sorry, teacher, where exactly you are from? I, I forget where you're from. And I thought, oh, I'm from South Africa. I said, yes, the place where there are a lot of animals, you know. And I, I was <laughs> laughing, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's still a misconception, you know. It's a stereotype, <laughs> but I understand, you know. Stereotypes are there to be broken, you know. <laughs> yeah, they're there That's to be broken. That's, yes, yes. That's nice, nice, nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the safari. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I'd never. Yeah that's like not my stereotype of south africa at all like when yeah. i think of south africa i think mm -hmm. a stereotype i have is uh really linked to rugby uh really liking rugby actually yeah, um yeah. and uh like mm -hmm. i guess traveling you know like to me it mm -hmm. seems like south africa is like it's like the australia of africa <laughs> like it, it's like i think of like a lot of backpackers i think about a lot of travelers yes, yes. but again <laughs> I don't know if it's completely true, but like that's one of the things I think of. But obviously, there are like mm -hmm. what eighty million people in South Africa. Or... Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, I mean yes, it's yes. It, it's a big country and very mm -hmm. diverse, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Um, mm -hmm. Are there any? Um, well, that's pretty much it. We spoke about you being a new teacher. We spoke about mm -hmm. Portuguese and English. Is there anything else that we haven't spoken about that you would like to say before we finish up this interview? No, I think that that's, that, that was about it. You know, that's that's pretty right. much about it. All right. All right. All right. Uh, but I, I would like you to give me an insight on your experience because we have more than 200 lessons. You know, you have <laughs> you <are> <laughs> quite a <laughs> experienced teacher and I talk, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd uh, I'd be happy to uh, chat mm -hmm. about all of this. So we'll we'll finish right. the interview right here. Um, Ed Mielsen, okay. thank you very much, Mr. Santos. If anybody would like to take in um, a Portuguese or an English lesson, 
check out his profile right under here. You could see how friendly he is. He's a learner, which is very important as well, because a lot of English teachers don't have experience learning a language. And I think this is really important. So uh, check out his uh, profile. Thank you, Ed Milson. Thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you. Right.